Welcome to No Rules Gardening. My name is Jim Putnam. And I'm Bree Arthur. And today we are at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum in Raleigh, North Carolina, giving you a beautiful tour of the Japanese maples for spring beauty. Yeah, that's the thing about Japanese maples is they're really four season plants, absolutely stunningly beautiful, uh, summer, fall, and winter but especially right now in the early spring as they're leafing out, as you can see from this iconic example at the entry to the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. And that's the thing. This is actually the logo for the Arboretum, and they have a yeah. fantastic collection that shows different colors and textures and overall forms. So let's head out into the garden for a tour. So where should you grow Japanese maples? Well, this can be a really confusing topic because depending on where you live, you're gonna be able to grow them in more or less exposure. So here in Central North Carolina Zone 7, we usually recommend growing Japanese maples in part shade. So usually I grow mine on Eastern exposure. They get morning to midday afternoon sun, and then they're shielded from the really hot temperatures from like four to 7 p.m. But when you walk around the Ralston Arboretum, you'll see Japanese maples sited in all conditions from full sun in the middle of a parking lot to deep shade under, you know, live oaks and, you know, things that are actually evergreen foliage. So generally what's recommended is in the south, like zones seven and eight, put them where they're going to get bright exposure morning, midday, but shade in the afternoon. But in cooler climates like zones six and five, you can actually put them in brighter exposure. The advantage Japanese maples have is they're deciduous, so you don't have to worry about their foliage getting damaged through winter cold snaps. However, you do have to think about varieties that aren't too early to leaf out because they can occasionally get damaged from late frosts. Now overall, once they're established, Japanese maples are pretty low maintenance, but you do have to water during excessively dry periods. And we're actually experiencing that right now here in the Raleigh area. So I've been watering all of my Japanese maples basically every other day, water them deep, and you can water them less frequently to make sure that their root zone gets saturated all the way through. An important consideration when selecting a Japanese maple is how tall they will actually mature to. So this is gonna be cultivar specific. Some can get like 30 foot tall, but then others have a wider, shorter stature, like this green one behind me that is mature, but it's only about four foot by 10 foot wide. Here we are at Acer Palmatum Waterfall. This is a really beautiful green leaf weeping form. And at this time of year, one of the extra bonuses is that it's starting to show its flowers. So you get that touch of red against that green dissected leaf. Japanese maples are one of my favorite understory trees because they give this incredible texture and really filter the light so beautifully, especially in the early spring when their leaves are just starting to come out. And though I love the red varieties, you really see how this lime green will brighten a dark spot. Now, both of these are really interesting varieties. Both are Japanese names. I'm not gonna try and pronounce them. We've all established that Brie does not speak Japanese very fluently. So I'm standing at one of my all-time favorite Japanese maples. This is Acer Palmatum Bihu. And you might recognize this because Jim featured it in one of our very first tours here at the Ralston Arboretum for winter interest. This has amazing bright yellow bark, but you can see in the spring how it takes on a completely different color with these beautiful green leaves. So here I am next to a very popular variety in the trade. Uh, this weeping Japanese maple here is called Orangeola. has one of the most vibrant fall colors. Uh, of course, Japanese maples, uh, we've talked about them being four season plants. You know, fall, they come back to life. Uh, would just show super showy colors, but Orangeola is particularly vibrant in the fall. It's important to recognize that Japanese maples are in fact trees and they deserve some special attention with the pruners. Never take shears to this plant. Be conscientious of its natural form and make very intentional cuts so that you can open up the inside so you can fully appreciate the amazing flowing branches. Long term, these grow quite large as you can see from this beautiful Oregon sunset.
said earlier, using these light green varieties can really be a pop of color in a dark space. Um, having sold Japanese maples for years and years, I know people are most drawn to the darker foliage varieties, the burgundy foliage and, and other just darker, darker varieties. But in a dark space, they can actually just kind of disappear. You can see the uh, weeping uh, one right here around the corner with the gold foliage. I think you can see the one directly over my head. And then the one on the other side of the fence, you see how they stand out. Uh, this one back here is probably 100 feet behind me, but in a dark space, it just shines. Now, a lot of times, Japanese maples get mistaken for another more notorious plant, aka cannabis. They do have a very similar leaf form, but obviously a completely different purpose for growing in your garden. And one of my favorites that frequently does get mistaken is this kind of lion heads form with these large clusters of flowers along the branches. Uh, one of the famous varieties is Shishi Gashira, but here we have Goshiki Kotahimi. So differentiating between cultivars will allow you to use Japanese maples in the landscape to create layers uh, like this where we have a weeping variety and then right behind it, a, a maybe 50 feet back, uh, there's a green foliage upright variety coming out and you can see the color contrast that it creates in the landscape. And in the fall, of course, both of them are going to have beautiful fall color uh, contrasting against one another as well. A lot of times people think that Japanese maples are just Acer palmatum, but there's actually a lot of different species that fit into this sort of general character, common name of Japanese maple. And above me here is a great example. This is Acer japonicum, a wonderful cultivar called Aconitifolium. And to me, this actually gets some of the very best fall foliage. It has a rainbow of colors and it's a few weeks later to drop its leaves. So I recommend growing all of the species that you love to include into your Japanese maple collection. This has been a very brief overview of some of the Japanese maple cultivars at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Go over to norulesgardening.com and visit our blog for more information. And now that we've shared these, we want to hear from you. Write in the comments below about your favorite varieties of Japanese maples to grow. Awesome, and please subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when we upload a video. We have lots of exciting content coming to you this year. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the garden.